week before gun season, middle of November. And uh, pretty chilly today. It'll be my last time out bow hunting before gun season, so doing an all day sit pretty much. It's about 11 o'clock right now. And haven't seen anything yet, but just gonna stay patient. The biggest bucks I've seen in mid November have been between like 10 and 3 o'clock. So it's prime time right now. Stay tuned. Alright, saddle update. <clears throat> About 11 o'clock. Oh, I'm going out, out here at sunup about 7, 6.37. And uh, this saddle modification is awesome. I do not feel those two main straps digging into my behind at all. So, Plus it's super warm. So it's about 15 degrees this morning. Now it's probably in the 20s, but um, so far four hours and um, and it's been fantastic. All right, just had a, a hunter, younger hunter walk by. Guess he shot one yesterday, and they ran out of blood, and they were in here tracking him. Him and his dad were here. Just talked to him for a little bit. Seems like a nice guy. They were nice enough not to come in until uh, until about lunchtime right now. Cause they didn't want to screw up my hunt, so that was really nice of them. Um, hoping they found it. I'll probably never find out. I didn't get the guy's number or anything. But if I run into him, into him later next year, I'll, I'll ask him if he recovered it. I thought for sure that buck was going to work its way in. I had some um, estrus scent hanging up in an opening area where I could get a shot and I was dropping milkweed and it was swirling a little bit but it was swirling up the other hillside which was where that buck was coming from but I didn't think about it until later but when those two hunters walked by um, tracking that deer from the previous day they walked by about two hours before that buck came in and the buck stopped and just put his head down for seemed like 30 seconds to a minute and then all of a sudden just turned and slowly walked started walking away up the other side of the hill and that's when i did a desperation bleat and he just kept slowly walking away um but i think i think that ground scent they left behind uh didn't help the situation but that's public land at its finest you can't control what's going on and uh what other hunters do um, I was excited for those guys. I hope that younger guy, I said he shot a decent buck the previous day and I almost got down and helped him, volunteered to help track it with him. But uh, then he told me his dad was uh, with him also so they didn't need any help. But So if you're the young guy that shot that deer, um, please comment below. Let me know if you recovered him or not because uh, I want to see a picture. And they saw my vehicle parked there, so they were even nice enough to kind of stay out of there until lunchtime, uh, which they didn't have to do. I wasn't, I don't get upset if people walk by me um, hunting on public land. I mean, it is public land, and of course you try to find a spot away from everyone else. Um, but I, just, I get excited over anyone that shoots a deer, and 
I've actually offered to help guys on that particular piece um, drag deer out before. Um, one guy a couple years back said he shot a seven pointer and offered to help him. He said no thanks anyway, but he's got his son coming to help him. So, uh, so leave a comment below if you guys do anything special with ground scent. I know I wear rubber boots. I try to. I have rubber boots that are is con they're sealed kind of on top. I can kind of so the so the air doesn't puff out every time you take a step. Um, I don't spray anything on my boots, um, but I'm interested to see what you guys do if you do anything for scent control. I wash my stuff in scent-free bag, and then I throw everything to try to get the human odor out of everything, and then I actually throw everything in an earth scent with an earth scent wafer in a scent-free bag. And that seemed to work really good for me. I've been, uh, <coughs> deer have been downwind of me uh, numerous times, and I rarely, I rarely have them snort at me. Sometimes they'll kind of sniff around and look, but um, I have not got busted much with that technique. It's worked pretty good for me. I'll probably stick with it. All right, some scripture I want to share with you guys is Proverbs 1, verse 32. It says, For the waywardness of the simple will kill them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. So um, I know a lot of people are, are fearful, whether it's fearful of the virus or fearful of your job situation. Um, that can really drive you bonkers. Um, but God doesn't want us to live in fear. And we can, live, we can be at ease without fear of harm. That doesn't mean we're going to have it easy if we follow Jesus and we're a Christian. It doesn't mean we're going to have an easy road or life is going to be all rosy. But we can be at ease and uh, without fear of because God ultimately has things under control and we don't need to worry about it. Because really, uh, what as Christians, really, what's the worst thing that can happen to us? Uh, so we die. And we get to be with Jesus forever um, in eternity. Um, that's a... That's pretty awesome. Not that I'm going to kill myself or I want to die. Um, I want to try to be around with my family, with my kids, and my wife as long as possible. I want to still shoot some big, big bucks, Lord willing. But at the end of the day, eternity is a super long time, and we're only on Earth for a very, very short time. So that's why I urge you to, um, if you've never read the Bible, uh, read the Book of John. It's a great first book to read. And also, if you have any more questions, we'd love to send you a free book. I'll leave, in the comments below, I'll leave an email address where you can reach us, and we'd love to send you a free book if you have any more questions. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay on target.